Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Thailand with us. Before uh, moving on to the Constitutional Court's ruling yesterday, there was update from the rally side demonstration mm. at the Makawan Rangsan Bridge yesterday. Of the it was it was the rally side of the Network of Student and People for Reform of Thailand or the NSPRT. There was a report of a policeman. Uh, who was manning a barricade at Makawan Rangsan Bridge on Ratchadamne Nog Avenue, who was slightly injured on Wednesday at around 2 p.m. by what was believed to be a giant cracker or might be a ping pong bomb. Police Ooh. have not yet to um, identify what mm -hmm. the explosive devices was. The devices was thrown by an unidentified person. Now the injury was identified as Police Sergeant Major Gritsana Mangkala of the Mueang Samut Sakon's Crime Suppression Unit. He said that uh, before the incident he saw around um, a group of men in okay. their 20s standing in the opposite direction but he did not see who was the one who threw ah. the devices inside the rally compound. Mm -hmm. Now, so. of course, there's a lot to update. Mm -hmm. I was quick to go for a short <laughs> break. But um, there's also a report yesterday that um, at the Democrat Party yes. headquarters, a group, a bus, actually a bus full of Richard's people from Ubon Rajatani province, about mm -hmm. 50 of them, went to the Democrat Party headquarters yesterday pretty much yelling, screaming at oh. um, the people at the headquarters at the time. And they say a lot of cursing was flying around. But fortunately, the guards in the area were able to dis mm -hmm. escort all the people <laughs> back to the bus. So nothing violence happened. But yesterday, it seemed that was at noon. So that's even before the verdict came out. Mm -hmm. And they probably, on their way to Rashamankala Stadium, decided to stop oh, by. Oh, just at to the, drop off. Yeah, yeah to, to drop by, hi. say hi to the Democrat wow. Party. But... Yeah, apparently political situation in, in Bangkok is quite heated. Right. Mm -hmm. Now back to um, the, the verdict. The verdict. Mm -hmm. As according to schedule, it's, it said that the court, constitutional courts, uh, judges will read the verdict starting really at morning. around 11. Exactly. However, it was delayed by more than two hours. I will start with the incident in the morning at 9.30. Nine judges of the Constitutional Court have attended a meeting to decide first whether the amendment of the Charter on Senators' election and qualifications violates the Charter or not as petitioned by a group of 40 senators and uh, some of the Democrat MP. The court was initially scheduled to read the verdict at 11, however, at two and a half hour, there was no judges in the courtroom and the monitors broadcasting the live feeds from inside the courtroom were still blackout. So at around 1.30, the Constitutional Court started reading its verdict in the case of senatorial elections and senators' qualification. The court ruled there were several points here. First of all, they had to rule whether it has the authority to review the petitions against the Charter Amendments or not. And the Constitutional Court said that, yes, they have the right the authority to review this particular um, petitions because earlier there was comments from some scholars and academics and also the Pure Thai MPs that said that the Constitutional Court has no authority to consider this particular case because that would be the violation of the check and balances mm -hmm. system. So with that leading on to the second ruling, on the first point, the Constitutional Court ruled with uh, six to three that the procedure, the process to pass this particular bill to change the makeup of Senate to amend the charter had violated Article 291 and consideration was based on three grounds Firstly, they said that the draft submitted to the parliamentary meeting was not the same one submitted by Kun Udomde Ratana Setian, the one that was forwarded mm -hmm. for the royal endorsement. Yeah, so, I think they were yeah. saying that there was a handwriting yeah. on the document itself mm -hmm. and it wasn't the same one as the first one. That's the problem. Yeah. So they consider um, the, the court said the process was illegal. That was the first one. And the second one, they said that the second reading of the charter amendment 
had violated the meeting regulations, the court cited the debates by MPs and senators who disagree with the majority side of the vetting panel were cut short. As I said, as we have reported um, several weeks ago, 57 MPs who registered to debate in the parliament were not let to speak. Mm -hmm. They said that they were running out of time, so they had to cut short with the process. And the voting was retroactively done on the third grounds they said that the voting for the charter amendment bill was illegal because it was obvious on the video clip provided by Kun Rang Sima Rasami, the Democrat MP, that uh, some Puda MPs or the coalition MPs clocking in to vote for their peers. We have reported that incident as well. So the court stated that the law required each lawmaker to vote freely without the influence of others and the conduct of voting for others was against was against the principle of honesty. That was the first point of the court's ruling. While on another one, the Constitutional Court has to rule whether this particular amendment bill violated Article 68 that was um, Mm -hmm. That uh, suggested that MPs and senators of this group, 312 people, having motives involving the seeking of power or abuse of power through the constitutional ways. Mm -hmm. The court reasoned that the amendment bill violated the check and balance system between the lower and upper chambers by having all senators come from the elections and it slammed the amendments that would allow spouses and close relatives of MP to stand in senatorial election as well. So they had voted five to four to rule that the bill had obviously violated Article 68. However, it dismissed the petition by the Democrat MPs or the senators to dissolve the six coalition parties. They said that because the petition or the charges did not directly involve with the party, oh. but the um, the parliamentary mm -hmm. members. All right. So that's not that's all what we've heard from the mm -hmm. Constitutional Court yesterday. Once again, in chart, they found the process, the procedure, and certain details of the Charter Amendment Bill are lawful, illegal. Um, however, after this, mm -hmm. the burden was left in the hands of the NACC, I believe, the National Anti-Corruption Commission, because they still have to rule on the punishment. Yeah. Right. That's one of the things that a lot of people were shocked yesterday mm -hmm. because we waited for such a long time to hear about the court verdict. And when the court started reading, yep. everything just seems like, yes, this is wrong, mm -hmm. check. This is wrong, check. Yeah. And then they the closed. End. Yeah, the, the closing of the verdict was that, yes, but it's not so bad that the six coalition parties has to be dissolved. Yeah. And that was kind of pretty much it. And everybody just kind of like, okay, mm -hmm. so now at least we are clarified that this is wrong, but yeah. in terms of the punishment um, for this wrongdoing, mm -hmm. we're not sure what will happen. Of course, the Democrat Party, the opposition party, say it will request the NACC to prosecute 312 MPs and senators involved in this particular case, especially Kun Som Sakit Suranon and Kun Nikom Rat Panit for mm -hmm. abusing of power. Right. And regarding concerns over the Charter Amendment Bill and what direction it will be going after the court's verdict, now the bill in question has already been forwarded to the Royal Household Bureau, waiting for the royal endorsement from His Majesty, but now that uh, several flaws have been pointed out, the bill will most likely automatically drop from mm -hmm. the table. Right. Well, moving on to another case, I guess at least w one more bill <laughs> in question is the loan bill. We're talking about the two trillion baht bill yes. that was supposed to be used for infrastructures mm -hmm. and, of course, some for the water management program as well. And they all have been quite, um, I would say, the highlight uh, or the focus of a lot of people because the thing was, this is the largest, yeah. the largest loan that our country <laughs> will ever have, a single amount, largest single amount ever borrowed, and it is supposed to be used for like seven years. But the thing is, it was so large that um, a lot of people were concerned, mm -hmm. so am I. Now they say that um, this particular bill obviously has been passed, like I said, since uh, early morning of yesterday at about 3 a.m. But the report did not come out until 6.20. Yeah. Um, and that was uh, 
by the time we were in the show already, so we could not report on that. However, they say that the Senate already passed the third reading of this particular bill, and they say that um, the vote was like 63 um, to uh, 13. In, unfortunately, Tyra said to 14, so I'm oh. not sure. And but. For sure is three abstentions, but mm -hmm. 63 for sure voted for it. And they say that the senator has already agreed to maintain this version that approved by the House representatives. However, they say that at first they thought that um, they would perhaps wait a bit because obviously it's almost three in the morning. Yeah. You know, I would think that um, they, well, they say that original plan was that to end it at midnight, but mm -hmm. then Kunikom. Um, the Senate yeah. Speaker has came out and said that let's just finish it all before yeah. the Constitution Court um, verdict came out. <laughs> I guess he wants to do, you know, dealing with one problem at a time and such. So they ended up passing it through but anyway. But this is the second time that they passed the reading at like at three... early hours in the yeah, morning. Yeah, very early. Yeah, that's when we got up. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of people still sleeping at the time. So obviously a lot of people would have a lot to say about this because not at all suspicious to mm -hmm. do that in early hours, but you know, uh, for their to 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 give the Senate Speaker um, some kind of space, he probably would like to finish everything up yeah. early. Um, so they say that at this point, um, this endorsement cleared a way for Prime Minister Hun um, Ying Lakshinawat to actually forward this bill to His Majesty the King for approval, but. The Democrat Party, um, the deputy leader, Kun Gon Jatikawanit, said that I think they've foreseen this beforehand mm -hmm. because he said that as soon as the verdict came out or the, the bill has been passed yeah. by the Senate, they filed um, a petition against the bill with the Constitutional Court, oh, really? asking the court to, oh. to take a look at this bill as well. So I guess um, at this point, they probably will, we're probably going to hear more about it. It seems like the Constitutional Court judges will probably have more work um, on site at this point. Mm -hmm. So they say that um, for this particular request, um, they are the Democrat Party are claiming that the government um, did not write clearly in terms of where the money going to go to which project because mm -hmm. it's almost like if we have amnesty bill, a blanket amnesty bill, this is almost like a blanket loan bill. Yeah. Where we're not quite sure which direction is going. Oh, I got that. It's mm -hmm. like we've got to write a plan or a proposal before we're asking for a budget, right? Exactly. And the thing was uh, with this particular project as well is mm -hmm. that um, the money did not have to go into the, um, the through the parliament itself. It was just kind of like, it's just there as, really? you know, a big budget. And so at this point, they requested that at least it should pass the parliament in terms of, okay, what you're going to do mm -hmm. with it. And then it's dispersed to different projects later on. Plus the fact that um, this particular project, normally if you do infrastructure program, you need to at least have the EIA yeah. beforehand, right? But this particular loan bills pretty much saying that, yes, the two, uh, the, the water management budget uh, project, excuse me, will get the budget regardless of what the EIA would be because obviously they haven't done that yet. Oh. So there's a lot of questions in terms of um, legality of this particular bill that has been just sailed through the third reading. We're probably going to have to hear a lot more about this for sure, especially next week. One after another. Yeah, so I guess constitutional court judges will still have more work for them. Uh, up ahead for the next week. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a short break because Kun Chen will talk about the direction of our country after this particular big court verdict. So please stay tuned.